I believe I believe we had problems in the past, didn't we? And is something something is blocking that part of the camera. There we go. Let's do that. <clears throat> if this uh, if this doesn't work, I'll just wait till I'm down in LA. I'm going to uh, going to Santa Monica. So I'm going through bad uh, bad reception areas uh, also. But uh, while while I'm up, is it a good signal? Okay. So uh, this kid Cruz, uh, Nicholas Cruz. I was I, I should back off of Twitter uh, on you know the day that something like this happens. Uh, in all in all honesty, I, I really should stay off Twitter. But I was seeing a lot of I I, I, I don't suffer fools well, and I was seeing a lot of stupid shit uh, yesterday on on the Twitter. Uh, some of it by someone who's a who's a good friend. Well, okay, am I back now? Okay. Um, and I was uh, pointing out that we live in a rights-based society. And um, uh, people who died a long time ago uh, endured great sacrifice to give us these rights, and that we owe them, <clears throat> we owe it to them to take a deep breath and not edit their work just because we're emotional. And that's what happens after a mass shooting, is people immediately, and our Lieutenant Governor, Gavin Newsom, led the charge yesterday. He started hashtag gun control now. Um, no, that's not how you do law. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry about your feels and everything, but that is not how you... Uh, okay. Uh, the found... Uh, uh. All right. The... Uh, the founders... You know, remember, the U.S. Constitution was written in the aftermath of the deadliest war to uh, to occur up to that point on North America, right? Everybody who had a hand in the U.S. Constitution lost somebody in the Revolutionary War um, or fought directly in the Revolutionary uh, War against Britain. Yet, um, nevertheless, they felt uh, th 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 so strongly about the individual free man defending uh, his country that they enshrined in the Bill of Rights as the Second Amendment the right to keep and bear arms. And again, uh, the spurious argument that the framers didn't have AR-15s in mind uh, ignores the fact that when they wrote the Constitution, the deadliest handheld weapon on earth was the Kentucky and Pennsylvania rifles. The rifled musket of North America uh, could fire three well-aimed shots out to 200 yards in 1791, 1776 for that matter. Um, and it was owned by private individuals. Okay. Um, uh, so when I hear that, I, I go a little nuts. And then a friend of mine on Twitter um, said to me, well, what about the rights? All right. So anyway, a, a friend of mine, uh, a, a good friend, um, but she's an... All right, okay. I'll just keep reconnecting. Uh, by the way, uh, Sprint is my provider. So just in case you're wondering, I don't mind them in general, but man, there is no right to live until sundown. You have no right to... You have a right to expect... And you have a right to say, well, the kids should go to school in safety, but there is no such right. There's none. Um, and this, I, I think this is a big dividing line between a lot of people. Um, when I drop my daughter off at school, I have no right to expect that she'll be alive at the end of the day. I have a right to try. You know, that I can do. Um, I, I live 60 seconds from my daughter's school, and I can make it in 45 if I have to. But I have no right uh, to um, <clears throat> to 
expect uh, to li- you have no right to walk yeah anyway I have no right to drive down the 14 without an accident I, I have no right um, you know to be alive 30 seconds should I just keep it in my hand I have a good feeling I have a good feeling this time I'm coming down into Santa Clarita, so I should be getting a better signal. Um, but, uh, so anyway, um, the, uh, the deal is, um, I, I'm really curious about people who have such a tenuous relationship with freedom and liberty that, that they think that it extends to a right to stay alive for the rest of the day. Um, you know, the law says that you have a right to expect clean food and water because there's a law. We can control that. There's something that we can do about that. Um, but there is no law that says we guarantee you're going to stay alive today. There's none. And I, I don't get why people don't get that. But um, so th- that's part of the argument by emotion that, I, that really annoys me at a time like this, when someone like Gavin Newsom says, hashtag gun control now, now, and then I ask him, every time he posted yesterday, I replied to him and said, what specifically would you have done to prevent this? Um, I want to know. Because, um, and, and here's where I think for a lot of um, you know, full laissez-faire Second Amendment people, I, I kind of annoy him, but um, I, for one, have no problem with amending HIPAA rules. You know, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act uh, ensures your privacy, the privacy of your medical records, right? Um, I have no problem amending that so that a psychologist, like for instance, Elliot Roger, the Santa Barbara kid, he had been on mood-altering drugs since he was 12. Uh, his psychologist knew. Okay, uh, his psychologist knew that he was a dangerous kid. He was a danger to himself, and he was a danger to other people. So the psychologist who spends that much time um, with a kid who knows that should be informed when when the kid buys a gun legally. When the kid get, go, gets older than 18 or older than 21 and can stop taking his or her meds, the psychologist needs to know that because uh, James, uh, what's his name, in Aurora, Colorado, um, uh, Adam Lanza at Sandy Hook, all these kids were on uh, Adderall or whatever, they were all on drugs since they were 12 or 13 because we don't have male teachers anymore in junior high. Um, and overwhelmingly, there's female teachers. They can't put their hands on kids anymore. They can't beat the crap out of them. So, like my t- my like my teachers did in junior high, because I I was that kid. Um, I was hyperactive. Um, couldn't control myself. Raised my hand all the time in class. And uh, luckily, I had a great junior high teacher by the name of J.C. Kilmer, uh, who had permission from my dad uh, when I acted out to give me a little wall therapy. Um, uh, he was a really, really good guy, a great patriot, a great a great American, and his his son, my, my friend Derek Kilmer, is a congressman now. Uh, he raised good boys, and then everyone who's in contact with Mr. Kilmer. All right. So, it's, and anyway, that's just, that's um, uh, my, my thing about the drugs, because, again, the other, the other thing that no one wants to hear, that Gavin Newsom or no one wants to hear, is hey, these weapons existed 30 years ago. Why didn't spree shootings happen 30 years ago? Um, Why, before the National Firearms Act of 1934, why didn't people take Tommy guns? You you could buy a Thompson Model 1928 submachine gun out of the Sears catalog. Um, Why didn't that happen then? Um, What happened between all of American history and Columbine. What, what, what happened after Columbine? What, what was the difference? Well, those two kids at Columbine uh, were under psychiatric on psychotropic drugs, uh, the whole deal. Um, and that's become the pattern that these shooters tend to be middle-class white kids who are on these drugs. Um, 
why doesn't this happen at Dominguez Hills High School or in Compton, where Compton and Silmar, you know, are awash in actual assault rifles, in actual AK-47s that actually fire full auto, okay? The gang-ridden areas of L.A. Um, could probably produce a brigade of infantry with all the weapons there, yet this shit doesn't happen there. Why not? Well, it's because um, uh, working class, lower class people don't have their kids on drugs. Um, they they can't afford to go see a psychologist for their little Fauntleroy, for their kid. Um, you know, and these are kids who are consuming violence uh, in music uh, all day long in Compton. Um, they're glorifying it, yet they don't grab their big brother's AK and come... So clearly, um, the the issue uh, isn't guns, it's mental health, and it's the mental health of middle class kids. And, and again, it, uh, the other thing that sets me off is when people compare the United States to England and go, oh, well, look at the firearm deaths per 100,000 um, between uh, the U.S. and England. Oh, well, okay, then put up the death by knife figure next to that, because Great Britain has more... Uh, homicide by stabbing per 100,000 that we do. So that Japan has 10 times what we do. It, it, it's, it's not analogous. It's not a good comparison. The better comparison is the U.S. to Switzerland. Switzerland is a multi-ethnic democracy um, where young men are conscripted and they have to serve. By the way, if you're typing stuff, I can't read it. I can't read it as I'm driving along. So I, I can't respond to anything anyone's typing, but I'm just saying. Um... In, in Switzerland, approximately 50% of them, they have an actual assault rifle, is where I left off. Um, they have ammo, and they have an actual military three-round burst or full-auto assault rifle in their homes. Um, yet, the homicide rate uh, in Switzerland is so low some years that they don't even report it, okay? And people... Um, they get angry at their wives and, and their co-workers and whatever. The, they, they do kill each other in Switzerland, but um, they, they don't have young men on Adderall. They don't have 14-year-olds and 15-year-olds on Adderall. And again, the issue, and this always annoys me, like this guy, he'll be blood tested. Um, just like Adam Lanza, you know, they did forensic toxicology on him. Uh, James Holmes in Aurora, Elliot Roger up in Santa Barbara. And what did they all say? They said, oh, well, there was nothing in his system. That's the problem. That's the issue. Um, James Hansen, uh, Elliot, uh, I mean, uh, Adam Lanza, <clears throat> okay, they were on those drugs all their lives. Then they stopped taking them. They turned 18, they stopped taking them. James Holmes went to Colorado to the University of Denver, uh, which they call DU. Um, and his, his mommy was a nurse, is a nurse in San Diego, and she hand-fed him his drugs every morning of his life until he left the nest and went to Denver, and guess what? Stopped taking them. Uh, and he was kicked out of the University of Denver because he was so nuts. Um, they, uh, uh, what's it, they, they expelled him because he was expressing psychotic thoughts. Um, his brain had not completed its wiring because the drugs interrupted. So as long as they stay on those drugs all their lives, they're fine. But like I say, they turn 18 or 21, they leave home, and they stop taking them. Adam Lanza stopped taking them. Uh, he was in the basement of his mommy's house, uh, and he stopped taking them. So to, to placate him, she bought him an AR-15. Um, good move. So, so, I mean, I will make this case all day long. It's mental health. It's not the guns. And yeah, does the gun make it easier to kill a lot of people? Sure, but mine mine aren't killing anyone today. Um, I'm not the problem. And I have a constitutional right. I have a Bill of Rights. You do too. <clears throat> and I'm not going to um, sit there and have a uh, subjective emote. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's... it's uh, uh, Having a debate in the in the wake and the immediate aftermath of something like this is like making an important life decision right after a car accident. Um, uh, all right. 
so that's that's where we're at there's there's more of these kids loner white middle class kids who spend the day on reddit um, or like this guy put up snuff films of animals on Instagram and things like that uh, it's funny YouTube will edit my videos or flag them because I drop an f-bomb but um, you know this this kid is on YouTube talking about killing animals out of cruelty and burning them or whatever and they don't they don't edit him um, the uh, other deal is you know this is the reason I've been doing that live show called how to hide your guns from Gavin Newsom because uh, and in the scenario that I talked about um, down in Orange two weeks ago a week before last um, uh, Gavin Newsom only needs one of these things to happen in California and um, and when, when he's governor if we can't when Gavin Newsom is governor and one of these happens um, he is going to strike while the iron is hot you know the very next day he will go into office with a package of laws pre-written um, and he will he will hand them not not to Kevin DeLeon, but he'll hand them to one of his leg humpers in the assembly, uh, and it will skip committee, and it will go right to the floor of the assembly, and it will be a popular voice vote, and um, he will have a, a Democrat supermajority, and it, and it will be a, uh, a power grab on his, his part, and now on June 30th, when you all so, anyway, on June 30th, um, when you have to register your 80% uh, AR-15 uh, lower uh, your, the weapon that you made, um, Gavin Newsom is going to know that you have it, and he's going to have your home address. And uh, Gavin doesn't care. If he was governor today, he would be ramrodding a bill like that through the assembly today for with immediate effect. Um because he knows once you start collecting up the guns, then it's going to be years before a court overturns the law or whatever. And he would have a Australia uh, like roundup, you know, an Aussie roundup, which still only rounded up like 50% of weapons. So there's a lot of people in Australia who uh, who are hiding their weapons. By the way, uh, the, the, they were they had registration before the the turn in. And they know that a lot of people are claiming, oh, I, oh, I sold it. Oh, I don't have it anymore. And they, that's not enough to get a search warrant in Australia. So there are people who uh, are hiding the weapons in Australia. But, but you wait. Um, if it happened here in California, Gavin today would be announcing the uh, California Assault Weapon Roundup. The, the, the Kauru or whatever. So, uh, right, now I have a low battery. So, thank you. Thank you, LG. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll do this. I am coming home from my big, huge lunch meeting. So we'll talk to you later.